One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best of. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that microbation. They want the shit that pops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. These boys are the Oscar Wieners. Yum. Welcome to Oscar Wieners, the only show on the internet where Hollywood's biggest night. What is it? Is a fascist. <laughs> oh, not the direction I thought that was going. Uh, Jesus. I am fish. <laughs> With a P H I S H. Nice. Very good. I'm uh, I'm Slippery Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> and we are two little slippery little podcast boys who talk about movies. Uh, <laughs> we're a couple of sea shanties, if you yeah. ever, if you can yeah. believe it. The um, personification of a sea shanty, for sure. Uh, no, I am Michael. He is Ander. Um, nice to meet you. And this is a weekly podcast where uh, we pick a Best Picture winner at random and try to figure out if it is Best Picture worthy. This week we are talking about the 2018 Best Picture winner, The Shape of What a... Nice. <laughs> what a world, um, baby. Directed by Guillermo del Toro. Big G. And... Shape of Water is a... It's a love story. It's a romance. Love story between man and fish. I guess woman <laughs> and fish. Um, a little untraditional, but that's fine. We're here for it. Uh, it stars Sally Hawkins as Eliza, who who um, works at a like government facility in Baltimore as a cleaner. She's like kind of a, I guess, a custodian. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, she works with her, her co-worker is uh, Octavia Spencer, whose character name is... Zelda. Zelda. Um, they're doing their thing. They're cleaning up bullshit. Um, Eliza also, her next door neighbor in her apartment building is Richard Jenkins, who plays Giles. Or is it Guy? It's Giles, right? I'm going to say Giles. Uh, and Eliza... You know, she's just working one day, and then the government's like, we found this uh, merman, this sort of creature from the Black Lagoon mm. in South America. Classic girl uh, meets boy. Classic girl meets boy. Um, Michael Shannon plays like, is he, what is he, like CIA? What is he? Just like, he's, he's just like government. Just some G-man. G, right. A G, just a totally. generic, picture generic black suit, black tie government guy. Yeah, um, he found Fishman in South America and has hauled him back to the United States uh, to store him in this facility, and they're going to, like, vivisect him. And Eliza's they, like, Eliza falls in love. Him? This plot is weird. Can um, I ask you a question? Yeah, tell me. What What do they want with him? Why do they want this? So they, so they happen upon a Fishman in South America, and they say, we got to get this because... We want to get to space. Is that correct? <laughs> you know, I, when I was watching it, I was like, sure. But like, now that we're talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess that's like a lit. That's like really sweaty. That's like a little bit <laughs> sweaty. That's like a little bit. Yeah, it's like the fish man has multiple ways of breathing, I guess, multiple ways of intaking oxygen. And I guess they're trying to develop a way for astronauts to breathe better in space it's during seems... the cold war it takes place yeah. in like 1962 they haven't gotten to the moon yet yeah they're trying it's... to beat the soviets right but it seems like the stakes around this fish creature are very high 
like the like the the general of the whole army is like breathing down his neck and is like we need to get that fish data or whatever like i don't even know what they're trying to do that's a that's listen that is a really good point like it seems like they care way too much for right. something that they don't understand at all like i feel like the 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 vibe the movie is a little bit going for is like a first contact story where it's like the government finds aliens aliens come down and they capture an alien and have him uh you know they're you know they're performing experiments trying to understand his like biology ander what's your relationship to the shape of water you've seen it before i really wanted to hone in and focus on because at its core this is a romance it strives to be like this untraditional romance so i'm like okay what's let's break this down because i remember the first time being pretty i was like surprised and enchanted by it i was like okay i get the message you know relationships can come from anywhere like these two unique beings like found each other and you know very nice i'm a little bit now like fuck's going on here (laughs) at its core this is supposed to be a story about human connection and I feel like there was so little effort towards humanizing Fishman. Like, yes. what's his what's his name? What does he feel? We see a lot of what Eliza feels and how she's reacting and thinking. She wants to bang the Fishman. Fine, whatever. Go, you do you. Go but off, we don't know queen. if he. I don't know if he wants that. He could just blink and he just blinks, glows blue, and says egg. I don't know like what he thinks or feels really. Okay. I think this movie is really good. It really worked for me this time. I will say, though, you know, per your or R.E. colon your um, stuff regarding the romance, I do think I bought this time more than ever Eliza's like courting of him. Like, I, you know, I see like yes. the, the way that her connection to him develops people overlook us we are like we are and that is how we're connected we are like ostracized and like i am in like that is part partly why i love him and why but it's also not he's not ostracized because of that he has his own world where i assume there are probably other fish people right unclear yeah because richard jenkins has that scene after they steal uh fish man from the facility where Fishman is in the bathtub right before he eats uh, Richard Jenkins's cat, Giles's Who's cat. Richard Je- okay, I was, yeah, sorry. I was confused for uh, a second. Giles is like, have you always been alone? Or like, like he's like sort of like, where did you come from? But obviously the Fishman can't answer because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> um, Which, if you're going to come to this country, speak English, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> Christ. Um, we should no, also but... mention that Eliza can't speak either. She's mute. She's mute, yes. Um, I, I think it's probably important to note. This, yeah. So, like, I, I bought Eliza's connection to him. But like you, I think ultimately I don't, like, at the end, I don't totally care that Eliza is in love with Fishman and, like, is, like partly doesn't want him to go because she's in love with him. Like, that's part of, like, there's this whole plan to get him into the canal so he can go back into the ocean and they can free him. But, like, Eliza puts it off because she's in love with him, obviously, and wants wants to be with him. Um, But I was a little bit like, so what? Because, again, like, Fishman can't really (laughs) communicate. He just sort of blinks. Uh, He... I think also there's something... It's something to do also with, like... Well, I wrote down the romance... There's no, like, intimacy to it, even though there are many lovely moments. It's like, I don't feel like I'm, a, like, in this relationship with them. It's so, I'm, I'm sort of seeing it from a distance. Well, um, there's so little time. To, they have so little time together. Therefore, there's so little time devoted to it. I feel like you don't really get to see it develop, which I think is kind of a problem. Like, what is, does he even know what's going on? It seems like he does not know what's happening at any time ever. I mean, maybe that's just, you know, that's an insult to his perception, but it doesn't, he just blinks and and glows and says egg. So I don't know. (laughs) I do not know. No, you're, you are like, that is, that's a valid qualm to have. Like, 
yeah like i think he hates he hates strickland obviously michael shannon's character because strickland is like the worst guy on the planet worst guy ever um yeah. constantly like torturing him electrocuting him yeah. just generally mean he hates being in the facility right because he's like you know a wild creature even i mean even giles says like well after they take fish man from the facility and have him just like in their apartment <laughs> in, in like in, in eliza's apartment he's like eliza like i know you're in love with him but you have to like free like he's a wild like he ate my cat he's a wild creature like i get he, which he's very he's very rational about surprisingly he's just like goddamn thing ate my cat shucks i assume it's because he has like six other cats i assume that too that probably softens bit. the blow a little bit i guess guillermo del toro's filmmaking style he does i feel like he does, this is maybe a weird criticism but he he has a very, especially in this movie he has a very like roaming camera like he'll kind of start wide and just sort of move around the space um, yeah and it sort of has like a sort of floaty dreamy vibe it does whereas like I want like maybe a more like slightly more grounded, intimate, like close on people thing, if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't think that was the problem, though. I think the problem was we didn't really have context for the characters and not much was explained about or shown as to how they're feeling. What's Fishman's name? Fil Guy doesn't even does have a name. That, I have to call him Fishman. Like they couldn't yeah. call him Mark. Egg? <laughs> Mark, <laughs> I don't know. They should have given him. A, she should have been like, I don't know. Run. There should have been a little. There should have been something. I needed more to believe their relationship. Because to me, it just it's as if she's trying to bang a, a, a dog or something, and that makes me uncomfortable. Because he has no real way of. He's intelligent and can understand, but there's still so much disconnect between them from a communication perspective and i know i sound exactly like <laughs> i sound exactly like the before like i sound exactly like the person guillermo del toro is trying to speak to and be like no this is like what connection and in, in human relationships are like like i sound like the scrooge in this scenario mm -hmm. but i I think there are a lot of problems going on here. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I think he's a creature. I don't think he should. Wow. I, you know what? I do. Wow. I think he's, and you know why? It's not my fault. I'm ready. I'm fully really? ready. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm fully ready to enter the, the viewpoint of someone who's like, oh, no, he's I've learned a lesson. He's a human like us. I don't think he is. I think he's, I think there's too much difference, too much clashing going on between the two main characters that I can't sanction this romance personally. I can't. I can't sign off on it. What are you, part of the fucking Christian League? <laughs> no. First of all, <laughs> fuck you. But like, he... Um, I, I can't, no, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I don't really have... Listen, it's it's a hard sell. It's the movie is a hard sell because Guillermo del Toro is asking you to suspend this, a lot of disbelief to be like, you will believe that a woman could be in love with a merman and they could but have. Sex I'm ready to do that. I'm fully ready. My heart is open. I'm ready to be accepting of this relationship, and I feel like it doesn't work. Right. There's something about the way the story is told, like the sort of yeah. Exactly. I mean, I I hear what you're saying. I I don't know. Par I partly agree with you, and partly I'm like. I do. Th I mean, Fishman is obviously horny. He obviously is in love with Eliza. I don't know if he is. <laughs> I mean, there's no no because there, there's, there's, there's that sexy, moment. There's that but... moment where Eliza's like, actually, uh, like they start to kind of touch each other, and then like Eliza's like, I have to get out of here. This is. I don't know if I could do this. And then like she starts to go to sleep. She's like, actually, I want to bang that guy. And yeah, then and that's that's messed but up. Then, but then, but in that scene, like right before she leaves the bathroom, before she has sex with them, they, she like touches him and he's like, Ugh. and like his like body lights up. He's horny, man. How am I? This supposed is crazy. To know that? <laughs> this is crazy in 2023 that we are debating if fish men can be horny. Is that crazy to say? <laughs> yeah, you sound insane, by the way. But just because he glows blue, that means that's a green light. To go ahead and just let's go to town. 
let's Always. let's flood our bathroom and just go at it yeah i don't know man i don't i don't i don't i didn't feel it he just kind of stares distantly and doesn't say anything or or indicate that he's in love he's just he seems more like he's fascinated like he's interested it doesn't really seem like he's enamored that's the impression i get maybe there are context clues that i'm not picking up on but that's how i felt okay it seemed more Listen, like I, he... I get it i get this movie again this i think part of what you're saying is why this movie hasn't worked for me and for some reason something just clicked this time and i was like actually i think another point i had i was thinking about is like i don't know if you know this um in like around November of 2016, uh, Donald Donald Trump was was elected president of the United States. Were you? Did you remember? Do you remember that? That was, oh, oh, that was the same year that um, Rita's <laughs> Ices opened up in my neighborhood. Yeah, I do remember that. They yeah, yeah, yeah the totally. TV. He was saying something about like, I'm president now or something. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so like that that yeah, was like that. for for historical context. Um, I don't know if anybody else remembers that who's listening. Um, but I think at the time, I mean, to me, this movie is so much a reaction to Trump, Trump's presidency. Like it is how <laughs> it's Guillermo del Toro, who is Mexican. And obviously Trump has some thoughts about uh, Mexico, U.S. relations. Right. Um, it's very bad things. Uh Guillermo del Toro is making a movie about a group of people who are othered by society banding together to save the life of like a non-human but clearly feeling and compassionate creature. Um, I'm all for that type of story. I don't think it was done right. Speaking of the other people who were othered by society... I guess just fuck them. Like they, <laughs> Eliza and the fish guy, they just go off forever. There's no postcard. There's no visit. There's no thank you to the friends that helped her along the way. There's just nothing. It's just like I breathe underwater and now I'm a fish and I'm where I belong. But you had people on earth who were supportive of you and were friends with you. And now they're just nothing. I don't like that. That's also valid, but I'm a little... I mean, Richard Jenkins, to me, his whole arc is like... Giles is such an interesting character. Giles, it's... To me, Richard Jenkins' performance is so good. I love Giles. I think he's a great character. And uh, I think Giles is like, you know what, Eliza? Go. Like, I, if you're happy, I want you to go. Okay. Like, he kind of... I think there's maybe a slight resentment where he's like, Eliza actually has somebody and he feels jealous of that. But then he's like, you know what? Why am I feeling like that? Like if Eliza, like Eliza loves somebody and also this creature I have to realize is me, is us. I should try and help if I can. Okay. That makes sense. And, and same thing with like... Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer is like, I mean, she has her own life. She has her own kind of stupid husband. <laughs> that guy uh, sucks. Yeah. Brewster. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, stupid husband. <laughs> <laughs> he just like, yeah, just kind of sits around. Um, but wouldn't you feel a little like it's very noble of him to have that mindset of like just go? But don't you think that it would be completely justifiable if you felt a little bit betrayed by your friend who just kind of abandoned you? Like for a yeah. fish that she met a month ago but that's a different movie to me <laughs> to me this movie is like trying to again what why i think it's a reaction to trump it's like what if the people who are othered by a system of you know white supremacy fascism uh race you know all all these isms right mm -hmm. what if they actually all work together and put aside like eh, i don't know if it's exactly saying that but it's but it's saying like what like all these people like, if we all, the ostracized, came together, we could actually, like, make a small dent in the fucking universe against, like, these systems that are oppressing us. I don't know. I think that's, like, kind of what the movie's doing. I also do think it's a good movie. I think it's entertaining to watch. I like the fact that it's... It, it, it does play on the tropes of romance, but 
tells a, a much more unique story um, and does try to, you know, try to pick at your, your preconceived notions about romance, especially romance on screen. Because we've seen so... This ranks way above so many other ones that we've seen so far. Like, I like that it's not just generic love triangle with with two asshole guys and one... It's <laughs> just... One one girl whose standards are way too low, I guess. <laughs> like I don't like I'm done with that. I don't need to see that anymore. It's been done so many times. Um, frankly, I I think the only reason that this won Best Picture is because it includes some scenes and homages to old shit, like old musicals and whatnot. Right. And I think Hollywood just kind of gets off on this type of self-aggrandization. Yeah, that stuff's because. <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not. Maybe my memory is all mixed up. But I do feel like when the movie first came out, it was like people were like an ode to the power of stories. And and I was like, and then I saw it. and I was like, there's like barely any movie. Like there is like people watch TV a lot, but like people watch TV a lot in fucking like Full House. Well, there's this... mean like Full House is an ode to <laughs> fucking cinema. You know what I mean? Full House is cinema. And I resent you <laughs> suggesting otherwise. Uncle I mean, Jesse there is the moment where, season. I mean, he just kind of. Fishman just randomly gets out of the tub and <laughs> strolls down in the movies, which, you know, let's face it, we've all been known to do every now and then, um, and is just kind of yeah. enamored with a movie. And I guess that's one of his more human moments. Right. Is that is he's such a striking a movie. image. Yeah. Just him standing in the middle of the theater, just watching this, like, huge screen. Yeah. That moment is, like, a strong characteristic, uh, characterizing thing and like i wish like maybe the movie had like dug slightly deeper into that just like I... more moments like that where it's like you know all i know about this guy is he loves eliza likes eggs and fucking <laughs> i guess likes movies i can oh I shit. Was... i'm regretting hold on the... people <laughs> hold on to your desk this guy is gearing up i can fix this movie in us in five minutes really Give him lines to sing in the scene where they have the song. Oh my god, you're not fucking wrong. It's And then you fix the whole, at least my whole issue, give him lines to sing. Because she has this whole, it's a beautiful moment where she's taken back and it's kind of like her dream or imagining. She's singing, you know, this whole Broadway music Hollywood spectacle. And it's really cool because she's singing her love and her feelings. Give him lines. Make that it so is... that we're seeing their connection in a way that we can understand. Oh my god, that is a great fucking point. Thank you. I thought of it as, as soon as I was watching, I'm just like, give him something to sing or say. <sighs> yeah, because then like once that scene's over, I love that scene too, by the way. And then like when, when that scene's over, you know, like the fantasy fades and she's mm -hmm. back in her seat. And she's just sort of sitting across from him and he's like unwrapping a hard-boiled egg and you're like <laughs> is like it's like it's like it's like when you tell your dog you love them and they just sort of like exactly look at you like they don't right. know what the fuck you're talking about that's exactly right that's how it feels that's how their relationship feels yeah i get that that's god that's that's a real i i i wonder if they shot that and then like guillermo del toro was like this is fucking i don't know if it, like an audience will only go so far like if this man starts singing out of his fish lips this might be a step like a bridge too far why i feel like it would go i don't know it's already you've already crossed the bridge it's a weird movie yeah. like yeah. i like weird movies make it weirder make it i don't know i don't know why you would cut that if it existed in the first place yeah that's listen listen you're right you've that is like a pretty easy fix for because honestly i think if he started to say stuff yeah i believe like i would like burst into tears I'd be like, I would <laughs> so like, too. It'd be so like emotional. This, this, this man who like is, you know, he's limited by his species. He can't communicate with humans the way you know humans communicate with each other. And like, just this sudden moment of like, in this fantasy, they can, they are communicating. Oh, that'd be so good, right? He just has this yeah. beautiful operatic voice, or like just one of those like Sinatra esque voices, right? I mean, wow. Call me up for the remake or something. I don't yeah, know. Literally. I think that's a. I think roll with it. Um, speaking of fish lips, <laughs> <laughs> what? Where are you going with this? They gave him like Brad Pitt lips. He's got some juicy. He's got some juicy smoochers. 
<laughs> yeah, he does have some juicy smoochers. I mean, like, he was supposed to be hot, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's got, I, like, abs. I, he's got Brad Pitt lips. Yeah. I, yeah, that's an interesting point. Like, I wonder how many conversations there are when, like, making a movie like this where it's like, should we make him a little hotter? Well, yeah, I mean... Is he I too mean, hot? Is he too ugly? Is he too grotesque? I mean, let me ask you this. Would the movie convey the same message if instead of a pretty hot fish man, he was just, like, a blob of goo? Like, what if he's just a blob, like a slug-like man with eyes and antennas and... Like, we can at least see features and human-esque features about him. Right. Like, would it carry the same message if he looked like goop? No, I think you're right. And that's honestly where the fucking trouble is. That's where the trouble is. I'm telling you, because the message wouldn't stay true. You're it a genius, defi- man. I don't know about that. I think I'm just kind of... I'm just poking holes left and right just to see what happens. Should we talk a little bit about Strickland? Yeah, we could talk about him because, like, he kind of perplexes me a bit. <laughs> Why? <'Cause laughs> well, he's the worst. He's definitely the worst, but he also has. He, I'm trying to figure because he has this fixation on sound and speaking, and especially like his partners, his wife. You know, he when they there's a scene where they have sex, and he's it's, like, it's like, don't the, speak. it's like the most uncomfortable sex scene. Yeah, it is very uncomfortable. Um, but he's like, don't talk, and he, he and he obviously has makes a pass at Eliza, and he's like, I'm, he's like, I think you're kind of ugly, but I like the way that you don't speak, which is yeah, the most he does say that fucked up thing to say. Yeah, I just I'm trying to get at the deeper meaning behind that because I can tell that there is one. I'm just maybe not fully grasping it. I mean, he's such a. I could see people even, you know, if people buy the the fish human woman romance, like I could see people being like, you know, this movie is very broad. Like he is Michael Shannon is racist, he's sexist, he's a mm-hmm. fucking fascist. Yeah. He is just the worst guy. He's like I like when women don't speak. Um that makes me more attracted to them because I am the smart one and uh women are stupid. They um, did a very good job of making him a hateable villain. Like he was a good villain in this. Yeah. What's it what's the actor's name? Michael Shannon? Michael Shannon, yeah. He's great cuz I'm sure they were just like, "Hey, just just be the most obnoxious urinal user that you could be." Like yeah. imagine imagine the most obnoxious urinal stance and it's Hands free, hands on the hips, yeah. just going to town. And you're and like, he washes yeah, his this hands. sucks. He washes his hands before he pisses and then doesn't wash them after. And then he sticks a little candy in his mouth with his piss hands. <laughs> Fucking nasty man. It's, that Actually, that part is, is brilliant, I'll be honest. Because you're just <laughs> like, oh, this guy is a no-no. Yeah. Um, also, like, there's like a subplot that I think... I think this movie might have one too many subplots where like maybe you could have focused in more on the Eliza Fishman stuff. Yeah. Um, Cause like there's the subplot with um, Dr. Hofstetter. Oh, we didn't mention the Russian guy, the Russian spy. Yeah. He's like yeah. a Russian spy, but then he, you know, both the Soviets and the Americans want to kill the asset. They call the fish man. They want to kill yeah. the fish man. And he's like, but I'm a scientist and I think we should learn more about him. I think he is like an intelligent creature and we, so he like so he kills american people to save this other fish creature that he thinks is human like i don't really get him i don't buy him as a sympathetic character i think he's still kind of an asshole who what americans does he kill he stabs that uh the military police guy with the (laughs) syringe and i assume he's dead i mean maybe he's not but yeah giles has that line like when he pulls up he's like i think that guy just killed a man <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, which like i think he did and it's like what are his ethics i don't really understand him like maybe in his mind he's just he just thinks americans are such scum that whatever i'll kill this guy but i'll save the fish guy but then yeah. he also like he's friendly and friends with eliza and giles like he respects her right so i don't really get his his deal yeah, I think it's the it's obviously to me it's the we, way like by far the weakest of the the subplots. Like I yeah, I didn't think it really mattered. Yeah, uh, 
I guess technically when they break Fishman out, he's sort of without Hofstetter's help, Hofstetler, Hofstetler's help. He would, uh, yeah, yeah, Hofstetler, Hofstetler's help. He would, you know, Eliza's plan would have like it wouldn't even have gotten past the fucking first stage because like right. Giles would not have made it past the military cop, um, right? So I don't know. Focus on the main story. Was it the main story? <laughs> I guess it's just like it's it's trying to fl- it's trying to build out the world. You know, it's like this is Cold yeah, War era. Sense. Uh, I like that line too in the opening narration where Giles is narrating like, "If I told you about her, what would I say?" or whatever. And he's like, he sa- he mentions like a, it was it was near the end of a fair prince's reign, and obviously that's like John F. Kennedy. I like those like little details. Because, like, oh. AFK was a year from being assassinated. Oh, I didn't pick up on that at all. I thought the Fair Prince was the fish guy. Mm. I thought maybe he was, like, a... Well, I thought he was supposed to be, like, the prince in the whole affair. Because it is. It's right. framed like a fairy tale. Yeah. Maybe maybe he did mean that. I, I just took it as JFK. Well, maybe. I don't know. Guillermo del Toro, for some of his faults as a as a filmmaker like his movies don't always connect with me like i don't love pan's labyrinth as much as other people mm-hmm. um i actually think the hellboy movies are my favorite of his okay. um uh he is really good at building out worlds like he's he's a good world yeah. creator and like making worlds feel like there is more happening beyond the scope of like his characters his main characters visions yeah for sure um and then uh I just want to mention there's this book. I don't I don't know if Guillermo del Toro was inspired by it or not. It's it seems like he could not have been because it's so it's such a one to one connection. But there's a movie by or the book by um Rachel Ingalls. Make sure that's right. Uh it's called Mrs. Caliban. And it is about a woman. Yeah, Rachel Ingalls. About a woman in like, you know, fifties sort of like kind of this similar time period maybe slightly earlier like 50s like leave it to beaver era she's like a housewife her husband works in an office mm-hmm. they have just they have like recently lost uh their adolescent child um and uh a fish man breaks out of a government facility and and there's tension between the husband and wife and uh the 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 wife keeps the fish man and then eventually they have a romance really yeah, and then I think at one point she like is I think it ends with her like driving him like toward safety or something. Like it's it's a really really good book. I highly recommend it. It's it's also short. It's like 100 That's pages. That's so odd. That def- that definitely has merit. But I, I have you heard the story about Margaret Lovett? No, that name sounds familiar though, I think. She was a researcher in the 1960s. This segment's called what what the hell are we doing, Guillermo? History Corner. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's called History Corner, whatever. Um, she's a researcher in the 1960s who worked at this dolphin dolphin research center. Basically, they're trying to teach dolphins how to talk. And she jerked off this dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh-huh. there's so many similarities to this story basically the dolphin would get feisty i'm paraphrasing but this is a real story that i i did did my research on i read a guardian article um the dolphin would get fight peter the name the dolphin's name was peter he would get feisty um and he would get little boners at lunchtime and she would just like kind of jerk him off and then that was part of their research Oh, so she was she wasn't doing it voluntarily. Like she was doing it as a researcher. Or no, no, she was doing it. Like no one she asked her to, to do this. Yes, to uh, the point where oh. she was then stay in the facility overnight to study to quote unquote study the dolphins further. I'm not trying to throw shade on her. I'm just saying that there's a lot of similarities. It's weird. The same thing where they they filled up the they she filled up the whole flooded the whole laboratory and swam around with them. Same same thing. That ha- it. Ha- Guillermo has to have heard that story. It has to be, right? For NASA. Yeah. Well, it ends a lot different. The story ends a lot sadder. They probably kill the dolphin, right? The dolphin commits suicide. Dolphins can commit suicide? 
the dolphin restricted its breathing after being separated from Margaret, and then he he died. Oh my god! So, so I don't I don't know what to tell you. I just think that story was so similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like when you hear the Disney version versus like the Brothers Grimm version of the fairy right. tale. Jesus Christ, that is weird. Okay, this has been what the hell, me. Guillermo? <laughs> <laughs> that was going on here. Um, so you have no reviews? No. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I just did that. That's instead. good. I mean, we're, we're, we're we're down to the wire. That's actually way more interesting than fucking. <laughs> max 150 who's like this movie sucks <laughs> no actually the people really liked it i don't know i know people it was really generally well well received um i just thought that story was i had to bring that up because that's crazy I feel like it was worth mentioning yeah that's insane um and again it was for nasa like what were they doing with these dolphins that they needed yeah this data i don't really know what, what they were doing they were just trying to teach dolphins to communicate but right i don't know how that was going to help them get to space yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh do you want to hear the best picture other best picture nominees yeah 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 yeah. um i would love to talk about this dolphin shit all day long i just (laughs) we're just for the viewer at home we're we're down to the wire on time um hit me with those all right so this year is crazy this year has okay. like multiple masterpieces nominated for best picture and they chose the shape of water. So let's just let's just start. All let's right. start this thing. Uh haven't seen this movie. Call Me By Your Name was nominated for Best Picture. Oh, okay. Uh Luca Guadagnino Guadagnino uh joint. <laughs> nice. I think he's Italian. Um, nice job, Luca. Haven't seen it, heard its fucking rules. Uh uh Timmy Chalamet has sex with a peach. He, he, you bet your you bet your okay your dolphin he does all right gotta check that out gotta check that out <laughs> next up is uh darkest hour which i think is the winston churchill played by gary oldman movie probably mm. boring that well, sounds kind of boring <laughs> sorry uh, it's probably whatever masterpiece <laughs> Next up, we have Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. A really? fucking five out of five <laughs> perfect movie. Just like one of the best fucking goddamn things you ever saw. That's a good movie. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, and we also have Jordan Peele's Get Out. Another really? Kind of, you know, a masterpiece. A movie that is one of the most important horror movies of all time. That movie is so, so good. It would feel odd if it won an Oscar, which I think well, would he, make it a good he Oscar did, winner. He did win Best Original Screenplay for... Oh, really? Yeah, for Get Out. Uh, but this didn't? Shape of Water did not? No, because they were like, the one where, they, where she fucks a merman? No way. Well, they made it Best Picture, <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. the hell? I don't get that. Like, if you're Best Picture and you're an Original Screenplay, wouldn't you also win Best Original Screenplay? Sometimes they like to spread out the awards, especially this this year where the, it's stacked. I think yeah. like Get Out had had sent such a shockwave of like people just being like, "This movie is like important. It rules. It's so yeah. good that they were like, we have to give them something." Um, okay, so they gave them best original screenplay. Could give them best picture, I guess. Um, but sure. Next up, we have Lady Bird, one of my all time favorite movies. Greta Gerwig's all these technically are this debut, year? huh? All these are this year? Yeah. Lady Bird's a masterpiece. I guess that probably would have been my... uh, I guess that would have been my pick for that year. Next up, we have Phantom Thread, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, another fucking five out of five masterpiece. D-D-L! What's good? I think... Would you... I think you'd like Phantom Thread. It fucking rules. Is it like Phantom Menace? So goddamn good. Um... Uh, next up, we have Steven Spielberg's The Post, another sort of Trump. Oh, motivated that's the news, film. newspaper movie. Yeah, a movie where like Steven Spielberg was like, "Oh my god, I'm so dismayed by the Trump presidency that I'm just gonna quickly shoot this movie in like two months and put it out <laughs> three months after that." Like he shot that's it so wild. quickly. Yeah, just he's just like such a pro. Out. Yeah. Um, haven't seen it. 
Well, wait. Well, didn't you say that you think the shape of water is a response to the... Because tr- how, how much time did it take to make shape of water? Wasn't that also a response to some of the Trump presidency or the election it, or, cycle? It, I don't know if explicitly. It just feels like it is. Okay. Guillermo might have been sitting on that idea for a few years, but like it feels so informed by like... And it comes out a year after he's elected, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, I mean, honestly, kind of another... The final Best Picture nominee is sort of a Trump... It feels like it's like a weird. The movie's politics are very strange. It's uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, I I saw that. Yeah, I thought it, it was okay. It's okay. It's an okay movie. It's kind of weird. I thought it was good. I don't remember much about it, frankly. It's I a like real Francis like McDorman. Yeah, she's good in it. She won Best Actress, I think, that year. It's a weird movie where it's like, what if? It's like it's like what if bad cops could redeem themselves? It's like such a, the messaging is so strange. It's it's a really weird movie. Those are the nominees. Cool. Kind of a crazy year. I mean, do you think Shape of Water is unworthy? No, I just think like I would have picked like three other movies over. Yeah. The, I would have picked I would have picked <laughs> Phantom Thread, Lady Bird, Get Out, or Dunkirk. Either of those over Shape of Water. Damn. Yeah. You know what? That's fun, though. I like that. I like. I like that as a choice. I like that it gets to stay in cinema history as kind of just this weird romance. Yeah. Um. Say that's our vie. episode. Say love Uh. <laughs> next week we are talking about. Fuck it. We're going back to the Grand Hotel. <laughs> Whoa. Nineteen <laughs> thirty. Fucking what? Three, two. Grand Sick. Hotel. Uh. Let me stay at the Grand Hotel. It's probably going to fucking be boring and stupid. I'll probably watch it on 2x speed. Um, <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do I'll it. I'll try not to. I'll try my best. Uh, Give it a and chance. Until next time, Um, have a good week, uh, wieners, and make sure to slather yourself in mustard and kiss your fish husband. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Every time. <laughs> One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best stuff. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that Michael Bay shit. They want the shit that bops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners, these boys are the Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. You never mentioned my haircut, by the way. Because did you cut long. it? No, I went to a a woman. <laughs> I saw. In the I street. I saw. <laughs> I shook a woman in the street. I said, "Cut it." <laughs>